Hello and welcome for another tip for the ride. My name is Alice Trindle and today I'm employing a, a Arab horse named Chance to help me. He's actually half Arab and uh, half quarter horse. He uh, belongs to Susan actually. And uh, we're going to work on a little bit of liberty positioning. In other words, no strings attached. Uh, your horse is uh, turned loose, totally naked, and there's a couple of things that you need to think about before you get started with this kind of a positioning. One, you need to make sure that you have a nice safe uh, area to work them in. While eventually I want to get this so that I truly don't need any strings or any walls or anything attached that they would just follow my body language uh, wherever I was. Uh, right now it's pretty important that I have a little bit of an exterior wall here to help me. Make sure that that's good and safe. Second, if you're going to try this uh, in your particular barn or arena, make sure that uh, if you're sharing that arena with other folks that it's okay with them that you turn your horse uh, loose and uh, that they're bought in on the idea of what you're trying to accomplish here. Last and not least, I need to make sure that I've gone through my horseman's protocol. Have I taken a good deep breath? Have I make sure, made sure that I'm here, I'm present, that I'm prepared to see a clear picture for my horse, focus on that, allow him to find that, and uh, then reward him when he does. That's a pr pretty clear uh, necessity for me to be able to communicate with him through body language that I have those things kind of going on, uh, on for me. I want to prepare him for my pleas and then be happy to give him a good thank you when he gives that to me. So let's get started here with a little bit of some liberty work. Now today's uh, lesson or exercise is going to primarily be in a round pen positioning. In other words, picture in your mind's eye that you are the hub of a wheel. You're going to try to send your energy out on the spokes and the horse becomes the outside rim nicely arced around you not with his hips flowing out or his shoulders falling in or vice versa he's just following the nice arc of the outside rim of that wheel as with any of my work whether I have a lunge line on or a, a end of my lead rope or up on board but anything I'm doing here on, on the ground should relate to what I'm going to ask my horse to do on, up uh, in the saddle, under saddle. So as I think about sending him off here and seeing that picture, I want to prepare my body in the same way that I would if I were up on board. If I were on board here and I wanted Chance to be able to first sweep his shoulders slightly off to my left, his right, and then reshape him on a circle here to the left, I would need to tip his nose slightly there to the right, to his right. I'd need to wait for his right front foot to pick up, his weight to, to shift to the back a bit, and then take another deep breath, reshape him around my inside leg, get that nice inside eye, and then ride him off. I have to think about those same kinds of movements here and then position my body to be able to influence those body parts so that we can have this effortless transition. Deep breath in my mind, make sure that I'm here. I'm going to see that clear picture for him to tip his nose over here to my left, to his right, to pick up his front foot, shift his weight back a little bit, and then see if he can go off here around me. I'm going to employ the use of a lunge whip just a little bit to help me as a kind of a pointer and also be able to send that energy so that I don't get myself out of balance, uh, no different balance than what I'd have if I were in the saddle. Shoulder blade weight back over my seat bones, nice clear uh, picture, good deep breath, give him some direction. Now see if I could close that eye. So I kind of missed it and he said, well, I didn't quite get you what you wanted. This is where I'm going to just kind of wait and get, see if I could get his eyes and his ears back to me just a little bit to pay a little bit of attention. There we go. Good. Now we'll start the whole process over again. If I don't have his eyes and his ears, then I'm not going to be able to really work his feet too effectively. If I don't get those eyes and the ears, then we go to work at, at, at uh, kind of making some energy come up in the feet and then pretty soon I get the attention, his eyes and his ears, where I need them.
So here we go again. See the picture again? See if I could close this door on this side? Now I'm going to drive him up. My energy again comes out from my core area. My shoulders, my hips, drive that on up. We'll see a nice little trot here. And I'll kind of shape him here around as if I had kind of two strings on him. One a little bit on his eye, one here kind of up underneath his gut there to be able to say stay rounded around me a little bit. I'm looking for those shoulders to stay up, his eyes and his ears to stay slightly in here to the inside, and for his feet to pretty much track up as he goes forward. You see a downward transition to a walk. I'm just going to hold on his eye as if I had a string or a cobweb there and see if I could lift up on his gut a little bit with my um, uh, the end of my whip here just a bit. We'll let him get that taken care of. Excellent. Good. Have him wait. Yeah, I wanted a little bit of a transition down to a walk so I'm still going to go the same direction. See that clear picture? Open the door where I'd like to have him go. Tip his nose. So I'll let him go off here, but I'm going to go ahead and draw him on back in a bit. And we'll set the whole thing up again. To tip his nose off towards you. He says, I can't quite do that. So notice what I'm going to do here. Draw on his eye his right eye until his right hip crosses underneath him. Draw on that eye till the hip crosses underneath, the legs cross under, and I get both eyes and ears. Wait for those little things. Try to not get too mm, aggressive about it unless he's just completely not paying attention at all. Then I might be a little more assertive about working his feet. So we'll try to set this up again and see if he can kind of follow this feel. He's having a little difficulty giving me his left eye there. He kind of is thinking, well, that's the way that I want to get go is out to the left, and I'm saying, or to, and I want him to go out to his right. So I'm going to position myself just a little bit closer. Thank you, good man. And use my flag here for him to run into if he needed to. Step that over. Now ask him to go off. Good. Now pick up my round pen positioning. Driving that, that where the stirrup would be, driving his elbow up and around me. Up and around. Up and around. Good. It's a nice walk. The feet are tracking up. He's not leaning in. He's not leaning out. This has a good, good forward cadence to it. Let's see if I could draw on his eye and cross his hip underneath there. Just as if I still had my, my lead rope on, the body language is just exactly the same. I'm going to send a little energy as soon as I get that eye lifted up slightly to get the, the leg to cross underneath his belly and then to balance up on the outside hind. Very nice. Good job. I like how he's paying attention. His ears are kind of telling us he's still listening to a few things that are going on behind. He's checking out the little movement that the dog's making over there, but things are going pretty well. He doesn't seem to be too bothered about things. Take a deep breath. I'm going to see him go off here to my right. He needs to tip his nose that direction. He'll lift up that, uh, his left front foot. He'll shift his weight back on to his right hind. Let's see if we can get that. Tip his nose, lift that foot. Now I pick up my body positioning. It feels kind of like I have a wheelbarrow here in front of me. And I'm going to push the handlebars of that wheelbarrow up and around. I'm driving his elbow forward with the tire of that wheelbarrow here in front, pushing it, driving it. Notice how my shoulders still follow the arc of the circle. My hips follow the arc of the circle. My outside hip has to step further. My outside shoulder. 
has to step further. That was nice. It wasn't quite my picture, so we'll see if we can set it up again. Good. I like just a walk. Thank you. Round pen posture. Now what if I decided that I'd like to kind of see his eye come to me and his hip go away? Like that hip to step under right there. Very nice. Good job. Excellent. What a good boy. Very nice. So let's do a few transitions now. Either between the gates, in other words, from walk to trot, trot to canter, canter back down to trot, or with the tempo within the, the, uh, the gates, a faster trot, a slower trot. The hardest gait of all, of course, is to get a good working walk. So let's see if we can set this up with some transitions now. I'm going to see in my mind's eye to send Chance off here to, to my right, his left. Again, you can see by looking at him, he's a little bit heavy on his front end. In order for that front end to sweep out, he's going to need to shift his weight a little bit back. And then I can tip his nose in your direction, lift up that foot that his nose is tipped over, and step his shoulders out that way. So let's start with a little backwards, then step him on out here. A good working walk is one of the hardest things to get at Liberty. So I'm not going to start into the trot too quickly here. Breathe him up into that trot. You may have to adjust where you are on the spoke, on the energy, just a little bit to get him to round around you a little bit more. You may have to go out a little bit towards his tail, draw a little bit on his eye. Try to keep the horse rounded as if you were riding him around that inside leg. You see in my mind's eye a canter here. I'll hear the rhythm of a canter, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'll get in time with that outside left hind and see if I can get and ask for him to canter just before he pushes off. Right now, 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 now. Deep breath, hear the canter, and ask for it. If I feel him coming out of it, I'll make it my idea rather than his. Deep breath, slow my rhythms a little bit, hold his eye, down to the trot. Very nice. Let's see if we can get a nice working trot, almost an extended trot. Nice. Now could I get that down to a little slower by just holding and breathing and down to my walk. I'll kind of use my hand like it was full of krypton. Isn't that kryptonite? Superman was, uh, would uh, kind of bother Superman. And I'll send my palm out there with some energy to say, no, you keep your eye up there. My, my uh, whip here says, stay wrapped around me. Nice. Good. I'm going to change how we change direction this time. See if I could change my flag here draw my energy off, and then send his eyes away from me. Now pick up my round pen posture again. No big deal if he loses his direction. I'll make it a little uncomfortable for him out here. Good. Again, he's not doing anything wrong. I just don't have his quite his full attention with that left eye, left ear. And his outside eye keeps on seeking a little bit of a way out 
rather than the way in. So I'm not going to get really angry at him, nor aggressive, just a little more assertive. Good. See if we can put that up into the canter. Everything in me wants to chase after him. I'll increase my energy in my whip and then back off when he gives it to me. Deep breath. Draw on his eye, cross his hip, and this time invite him to come on in. He says, I'm just going to watch you here for a minute, Alice. Good. So I'll break those feet loose by just going into one eye, then the other. And you notice he's taking a little step towards me each time. Good. Excellent. Let him know that he did a good job. The reward. And the reward doesn't have to always be a pet. It can also just be in my mind's eye saying, Atta boy, you found it. Good job. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for being here. And he's kind of telling me, sort of digesting what we did and things all turned out all right. He said, you know, all my buddies are outside, but I can hang out with old Alice. It's going to be okay. Kind of pay attention to what she might be asking of me. Why would I do this liberty work? Well, if I can get this working for me with no strings attached, think how it's going to be up on board where I have all my other aids, my seat aids, my leg aids, my hand aids, to be able to just fix and refine that kind of a connection, that kind of communication. That's my goal. If I can keep it this light, reach in and fix it and refine it and make it even more beautiful, then that would uh, certainly be the kind of picture that I'm looking for. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little tip for the ride. And uh, just want you to note that there were some things that were a little bit imperfect. And that's life. That's the way it's going to be when you work with your horse. The idea is keep a clear picture in your mind. Stay consistent. Take that deep breath. And the horse will eventually come through. You know what? You're going to make some mistakes. That's okay. Be bold in those mistakes. You'll know that you'll recognize that you've done them. And uh, then reward yourself when everything kind of turns out and you have this nice relationship going. So until I see you again, I hope you've been following the articles on Northwest Horse Source and uh, the uh, Liberty work, no strings attached. And uh, we'll start working on square pinning here in just a little bit. Thanks now.